Santa Classics Confidential and location at the University of Rockhampton at its beautiful campus. With me is Rosemary Barrow and we are going to be talking about some amazing statues. Uh, Rosemary is the author of a recent book in which she explores um, the classical tradition in visual arts. So Rosemary, tell us about uh, your work in this area. Okay, thank you. Well, the book you're referring to is The Classical Tradition, Art, Literature and Thought, co-authored with Michael Silk from King's and Ingo Gildenhart from Cambridge. And, of course, my aspect, my emphasis is the art. And my background is in the 19th century, but for this book I actually widen my scope and I look at the reception of classical art from the Renaissance to modernism. And what Thanks. scope there? Yeah, definitely. Um, and why we're standing here in front of yes, tell one, us about one this of beautiful our lady here <laughs> is um, so a prime example of the classical tradition. So part of our campus we have a neoclassicizing building and here we have some classicizing statues decorating it. Here we have in niches four statues. Um, they're allegorical, so they're representations of the seasons, and this is autumn. And so why why have a classicizing statue? Indeed. It's I think it's about showing a sort of um it's aspirational in terms of if you have the respectability of the high art classical tradition in your garden, then you are someone. And we know that she's classical um, because of her accoutrements, so she's autumn. So she has vine leaves and ivy in her hair and she's holding a bunch of grapes. But more than that, it's the, it's the, the mm. female form. Mm. So she's a semi-nude. Her drapery is falling down from the body. So it's just been held on there by a, by a ribbon. And here it could fall mm. at any moment. And so it's about showing the female form, which from the Renaissance onwards had become so associated, mm. so synonymous with the classical. But if you have a nude or a semi-nude in your garden, it's immediately saying antiquity mm. and high art. And also, of course, it's a way of displaying the female form under the sort of the guise of, oh, this is a classical lady. And you could get away with uh, a bit more eroticism, perhaps. Yeah, that. absolutely. So it's... Um, the classical gives a sort of a cloak mm. of respectability. So we're so used to seeing these images that they're almost distance from the erotic. Mm. Whereas actually these, these are quite eroticized yeah. images. And if we look back to their originals, mm. the original prototypes, they're Aphrodite. So they're goddess of love, sexuality and the erotic. And she seems really quite distanced from that original. Mm. But that's the trajectory, and that's how we need to look back. Yes. And also in terms of having having this in your garden, yeah, this not it's eroticized, mm. it's titillating, um, but perfectly respectable because it has this label of antiquity. The second example we are going to be looking at is Winter, this wonderful lady. So Rosemary, would you like to tell us a bit more about her? Well, I've just been talking about how the female form is synonymous with the classical. Uh, of course, this one is completely covered. <laughs> she's winter, so she's completely wrapped up. But there's the possibility of nudity. So you can see that her cloak isn't firmly fixed. It's just held by her hands. And if she let her hands go at any moment, this would just drop down, revealing the female form. And if we look at her stance, just like the other statue, she's standing in contraposto. So she's got all her weight on one leg here and the other leg bent. And the bent leg there is actually holding up the drapery. So any sort of movement of the arms and the legs, and it all falls down. So even though this is a covered statue, there's the hint, there's the hint of eroticism that this could fall down and, oh my goodness, suddenly all of her clothes have disappeared. 
And I mean, of course, there's uh, a lot of ancient statues where, you know, the drapery is sort of flowing, isn't it? Uh, one thinks, uh, obviously, of the Nikkei at the Louvre, that wonderful sort of flowing uh, robes. Um, so there's a hint of perhaps that. No, you're right, you're right. It's not just um, nudity. It's the kind of the wonderful bravura display of drapery that we get in sort of fifth century onwards. Lovely ridges and grooves and loops. And of course, statue would have originally been painted where um, the sort of the play of light and the colour would have emphasised the drapery. Here, of course, in the neoclassical, everything is unpainted, but you still get a sense of shadow and a sense of movement. And even though I'm not suggesting that these are prime examples of neoclassical art, you know, they're just sort of garden ornaments, but look at the movement of this drapery. It's wonderful. You know, it's, it's marble and it's heavy, but it looks light and flowing, and it's as if it has sort of a ripple of wind, mm. and of course the biting cold yes. wind, because yes. she's winter, <laughs> moving through it. Well, uh, thank you very much, Rosemary, for... Um, sharing with us some of these wonderful ladies here at Roehampton. Thank you very much.